Hello everyone. Today uh, we will talk about uh, modeling biological systems that have membranes. And we will in particular focus on a Python tool called SubSPML that lets you model systems that have membranes or biological systems that are separated in compartments and are interacting with each other through different compartments or simply to, to model biological systems where there are multiple models uh, together and there might be resource sharing or other forms of interaction between them. Uh, so to create all of these kinds of models, SubSPML is a Python tool that we have developed that can be used to create uh, biological models and you can run those simulations uh, using your preferred choice of simulator. So in particular, uh, we will be using uh, the BioScript simulator that uh, we talked about uh, last time to simulate the models. Uh, SubSPML um, is the tool that lets you create those models that you can then simulate using any simulator. I will start with what SPML is. Essentially, you have been, you might have been hearing this uh, word quite often, or you might be already aware of what SPML is. Just for everyone who do not uh, necessarily know what SPML is, I will start with a little bit of intro for that, and then jump into what sub SPML can do, especially uh, uh, with respect to modeling systems with membranes or combining SPML models together. And after we're done with this slides, uh, we will work on Jupyter Notebook that demonstrates the Python tool. And, and then uh, we will break out into rooms at the end of the uh, today's session to work uh, to have a hands-on experience with the tool as well. SPML stands for Systems Biology Markup Language, and it's a free and open interchange format for computer models of biological processes. SP, uh, SPML is helpful uh, because if you imagine there are users uh, diff in different labs spread all around the world, and everyone is writing their own biological models. So to facilitate the exchange of these models without without having to uh, resort to different uh, tools, there is a standard language that can be used to write all kinds of biological models in. And that language is SPML. And BioCompiler or BioScrape, uh, for example, the tools that we talked about work with SPML and provide interface to this SPML software, uh, SPML uh, language. And SubSPML, is a tool that, work, uh, that works with just this SPML files and can uh, create uh, combined models or model other interactions between these SPML files. So uh, exactly what SubSPML can do is it can stitch multiple models together or it can model resource sharing among various subsystems and combine uh, biological systems that have multiple compartments together. And finally, uh, which is one of the most important features, is that it can model uh, systems where diffusion occurs for transport of species in and out of the membrane. And we will look into these uh, features one by one, uh, but I will begin with uh, an, a pictorial representation of sub-SPML features. So essentially, SubSPML imports SPML files, as you can see on the left here. And the output of SubSPML is also SPML files, but this output SPML file is usually the file that you need uh, for a combined model for the whole system. So this is a list of different SPML files that you need for different kinds of subsystems, as you see here. Then you model the interactions between those subsystems. 
and you get the get, get a combined system together and you can export the SPML file out. So that's the overall idea with sub SPML. So it doesn't matter where you're getting the SPML file from at the left, and it doesn't matter how you're using your SPML file. So we will be using BioCompiler, for example, to generate these SPML files of different models of the subsystems. And we will use BioScript to simulate the SPML file that is generated as an output for the combined system. To look into this further uh, and to understand exactly the features for sub-SPML, let's uh, populate the same picture with some usual kinds of models that we see in biology. So those three subsystems are SPML model number one, two, and three. And all of those could have some species that are common uh, resource. So for example, you want to have a system where ATP is shared between all of these subsystems. This is something that can be easily achieved with sub-SBML by uh, specifying that your resource ATP is shared. So what, will, what happens in the combined system is that there is only single species called ATP shared, and then that is exactly the species that is used in all of the reactions in the different subsystems that you have created. Similarly, if there is a signal in the mixture in the external environment, and that signal is transporting in and out of uh, subsystems two and three here, as shown in the picture, that is another kind of interaction that can be modeled using sub SPML. As you can see from the previous picture, if we can do all of that, then uh, we can basically model biological systems that have multiple compartments together. And we already did, did that in the previous slide uh, in terms of having multiple subsystems that are individual SPML models and we combine them together. What you can do further is you can combine the systems that you obtained. So this is subsystems inside a system and then you can, and similar other thing, and then you can combine those together as well. because a common use case could be something like you have a vesicle or a cell that has different subsystems like transcription, translation, um, energy buffer, all the, uh, uh, of the different subsystems are inside this cell or vesicle. And you have a similar vesicle or cell again, and you want to combine those now together for to get a model of the whole thing. And so for that case, you would need to combine these two systems together and get the SPML output. As an example for that, imagine the system one has this membrane was shown with the gray color here, and it interacts with the external environment, which could have subsystems three and four now. So there could be chemical reactions or species in the external environment as well. And so, you can specify that to be the external for the system one and also external for the system two. And now there, the species in the external uh, compartment would interact with the membrane of system one and system two. And the goal here would be to get a combined model for this whole thing, which has all of these subsystems, these membranes, transport of proteins with compartments everywhere. And sub-SBML lets you do this very easily with, and it's built exactly for this purpose, as we will see. So just a quick note on how we could model, we can model diffusion in the kinds of modeling that we are doing, for example, with species and reactions. So diffusion, of course, is a three-dimensional process where chemical, transports in and out or moves in a medium uh, depending on the concentration gradient. But we can approximate it, make uh, assumptions such as well mixed, and we can discretize the space to, to have, to imagine a, a two-dimensional space like this on the right-hand side, where we have this dotted line is, is the boundary of the compartment and, and things are moving in this two-dimensional space here, depending again on the concentration gradient and we can tune the diffusion parameters or 
select the diffusion parameters based on what's happening in the given system. Looking into this further, a common type of diffusion through a membrane is a facilitated diffusion where the diffusing species needs to bind to certain membrane species forming a complex and then that complex leads to that species being transported out of the cell or the vesicle. This is just an example of how we can model diffusion uh, in our biological system models. As you can uh, see here, we can make the assumptions that we have been making for mass action and chemical reaction networks to model this system again as a chemical reaction network. For example, we could say that the concentration of the species, this blue species, binds with uh, the species which we can approximate if it's everything is well mixed we can approximate this also as a species concentration and then we can write chemical reactions for this uh, diffusion process and as an example for that you can see uh, i have here uh, three uh, types of different membrane models that you might counter so as an example for membrane models uh, modeled as chemical reaction networks first look at a passive diffusion example where the species can go in and out freely in a reversible reaction. And, and this is how uh, you would model it, where you would say species A, for example, A in, goes in and out uh, with the reversible reaction rates to A out. The facilitated diffusion example that we saw earlier could similarly be modeled as a chemical reaction network, wherein we have this A in species binding to the D, which could be the membrane uh, species forming a complex. And then that complex leads to the transport of A to make A out. And you could have more uh, complicated models of diffusion depending on how detailed you want the model to be. And you can have mathematical models or with, uh, that are derived in a certain way considering a particular aspect that you are interested in modeling. And so these could get arbitrarily complicated, but in the modeling framework that we are using, we would want an SPML file for the membrane model as well. For example, to get a picture of that, we have SPML files for everything for all these subsystems. We would finally also need an SPML file that models our membrane uh, subsystem. And I'm calling it a subsystem again, because that's how it will be in uh, the sub-SPML framework. What, what it is actually is just a membrane with an SPML file, which models the transport of species between two compartments. And we will create these models today to model this kind of system where we can have transport of species through the membrane and we can observe how the membranes affect the performance of our systems. So with that, I would like to just to give a quick note on the sub-SPML installation. It's on pip, so you can just do pip install sub-SPML. Hopefully, if you want to follow along in the coding part today, you'll be able to just run pip install sub-SPML, and you should be good to go. The Sub SPML build a cell, uh, uh, GitHub is on build a cell. And if you face any issues or if you want to look at it in more detailed manner, you can go and check it out. With that, I would like to conclude this uh, slides and we will move to the demonstration of the Python code now.